Do you remember where smells are processed? Do you remember that smell is unique in that it is not processed in the thalamus first? So the information, once we get sensory information to the olfactory bulb and into the olfactory tract, heading back to where? To the temporal lobe. So smell is going to travel through cranial nerve number one to the temporal lobe of your brain. Once in the temporal lobe, now, interestingly, there are pathways that will take that information back to the thalamus. There are pathways that will take that information to the frontal lobe so that you can think about it and decide how you feel about it. And then there are pathways. There are big old highways set up between your temporal lobe and deeper structures in your brain that are involved in memory, which is why you can walk into a room or, like, you go back to your high school. And you walk into the high school and you're like, whoa. Now, it, it's, it's like almost a surreal experience to smell an old memory smell. You're not even aware that that smell is a memory in your brain, but as soon as you are exposed to that smell, it brings everything back. It can bring back all those emotions. It can bring back all, all those experiences. It becomes really raw and it's really strong because there are hardwired pathways between the temporal lobe and deep structures in your brain that are involved with memory. Smell. Man, it's so cool. That's one fantastic uh, human, Newkirk, who has that awesome smelly stuff. Like, that's actually a great strategy. So you have something smelly that's, that you study with, and then you start to associate how smart and brilliant you are while you're studying. And then you open that smelly thing up during the exam, and then you have all these, like, memories that rush to the surface about how smart you are when you're studying for anatomy. <gasps> so smart. All right. Now, I am going to move on to hearing. Let's do the anatomy of the ear next. What a great idea.